Next on PIJN News, Dr. Chaps reports on these important issues. He's a business leader, he's a family man, and he's the only candidate running for governor of Colorado that has executive experience. Of course, I'm gonna interview Greg Lopez live today. Former Navy Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt took a stand to defend religious freedom by daring to pray publicly in Jesus' name. Now he helps you by reporting the news, discerning the spirits, and praying the scriptures. Would you pray with us? Here's Dr. Chaps. God bless you in Jesus' name. My name is Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt, Dr. Chaps, and you're watching PIJN News. On this show, we like to do three things. We report the news, we discern the spirits, and we pray the scriptures in Jesus' name. But today we have a live in-studio interview with a new friend. Uh, he is not new on the political scene. In fact, he used to be the mayor of Parker, Colorado, way back in the early 90s. But today he is running for governor of Colorado along with seven or maybe 10 other candidates. I'm losing count, there are so many. We take all comers, and we would even invite you, Jared Polis, to come on our program if you dare to be interviewed by Dr. Chaps. But today I'm interviewing Greg Lopez, my dear friend from Parker. Greg, welcome to the program. Thank you for having me today. So I'm so honored to meet you, and you are not new to politics, but you may be new to many in our audience. Would you introduce yourself? Yeah, you know, um, I've been married for 30 years. I have a beautiful wife, my, her name is Lisa. I have two children, Michael, which is 27, and Christina, which is gonna be 24. You know, we've been living in Colorado for the last 30 years, and you know, I do have a governmental experience. I'm also a disabled vet. I served in the military for four years. Thank you for your service. Well, thank you so much. You know, I, uh, I've learned a lot about teamwork and really looking at the country and what we need to do as individuals. I truly believe that, you know, when everyone can make a difference, and I'm, I'm a strong advocate for making sure that we give back to our community. Did you say that you served in the Army? Describe that. I served in the Air Force. Oh, yeah, that, that, that's I, okay. <laughs> I was thinking of someone else. I served in the Air Force. Why don't you tell me about your experience? You know, I was stationed out in White Sands Missile Range in New Mexico. Yes. And so I was a weapons specialist. So I got the opportunity to work on fighters. And fortunately enough for me, I was able to fly in the back seat. So I had a great opportunity. You know, that's where I met my lovely wife, Lisa. And so I, I kid with her that, you know, the exchange was, I got to meet the partner of my life for exchange of 87% hearing in my right ear. So when she does say, hey, are you listening to me? Are you hearing me? I do have an excuse to say, well, you know, I am a little deaf on one side, so. My mother used to call that selective hearing. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if my father could always hear, but uh, we, we need to give attention to our women, don't we? Yes, we do, yes, Tell we do. Tell me about your wife. You know, uh, she's a small business owner. She owns GNL Concepts. She's a project manager. For the last several years, she's been moving hospitals. As a matter of fact, she moved St. Francis. She was part of that project here in Colorado Springs. And right now she's working on a number of projects with, with Kaiser Permanente. So your family has experience in the healthcare industry, Yes. but you personally are also a businessman. You help your wife do consulting? Yes, you know, we've had our company for over 30 years, or I should say over 25 years. But you know, what I've done is public relations and government affairs. I also have another little small business that I helped my son open, which is a little restaurant bar that we own in Aurora. And he is a general manager. So your son is a bar owner, restaurant owner, right. and your daughter wants to be a movie maker. That's true. She wants to work in the movie industry. You know, she graduated from what they call the Dave School in Universal Studios. So she does digital animation and visual effects, and she's really excited about it. Well, clearly your family is very highly qualified, but let's talk about your <laughs> qualifications. You were the mayor of Parker, Colorado, uh, for those of us watching outside of Colorado, mm -hmm. where is Parker and how did you become the mayor? You know, Parker is located about 35 minutes just south, south of Denver. Um, you know, I became mayor as a, it was a rumor that I was gonna be running for office and I had no real interest in running, but the community, I was the president of the Homeowners Association and the community encouraged me to at least look at it. And I did, you know, I evaluated the tapestry, I evaluated um, what was the opportunities of the incumbent mayor and so forth. And I was 27 at the time. You know, I'd only been in the, in the community for a little over a year, which is a requirement. I didn't really know a whole lot of people, but you know what, I got talked into saying, you know what, you have the right skill sets, you have the right ability to communicate. And most importantly, we feel that you really care. 
you care about this community. So because of that, we encourage you to, to run. And I did. And I ended up winning by 27 votes. I was the youngest mayor elected in the state at the time. Wow. And I was both the mayor and the city manager. So it was a full-time job. And all the department heads reported directly to me. So you actually were an executive, unlike some of these other candidates uh, who served in the legislature, like I did, honestly. Right. I've never been a government executive, although I have some military leadership experience. Uh, you were actually in charge of a police force. I was. And if you become the governor, at least you'll have some uh, exper executive experience in your past to rely upon. Definitely. You know, as the mayor and the city manager, I was responsible for putting the budget together for the town, presenting the budget to the council, explaining why we were spending so much funds in the police department or snow removal or street repair or capital construction, all the ins and outs that the governor is going to have to do. As you know, the governor has to prepare a budget, take it to the, J the joint budget committee in the legislature, and then ask them or answer all their questions to how are we spending the people's money and what do you plan to achieve by, fun by funneling some of those funds to these divisions. So yes, I did that all the time, you know, for four years. I own no transportation because I sat on the board of E470 as a representative. And I also sat on the Denver Regional Council of Governments, which is 28 jurisdictions that would come together and talk about regional issues from transportation to air quality to water, uh, regional development, all the challenges that the state is facing. I've been part of the discussions at the table. Well, that's fantastic experience. We're gonna take a short break. When we come back, I'm gonna talk with Greg Lopez about his priorities if he is elected governor. Do you ever wonder how to discern your own thoughts from the thoughts that come to you from the Holy Spirit or angels or invisible demons? I'm Dr. Chaps and you've seen us talk about the gift of discerning of spirits. In fact, I wrote my PhD dissertation, How to See the Holy Spirit, Angels and Demons. But now we have an exciting 17 part video Bible study on a four disc DVD set that you can get for your small group or your church. If you just visit PrayInJesusName.org and offer a suggested donation of $99 or call us toll free at 866-ObeyGod, get this 17 part video series and for a limited time only, we'll throw in the book for free. Visit PrayInJesusName.org, get this important Bible study series for you and your church or call us at 866-ObeyGod right now. Are you frustrated at the direction your country is headed? Are you ready to fight for a cause and change the world? Do you believe God has called Christians to make a difference? Announcing a new book by Chaplain Gordon Klingenschmidt entitled How to Liberate the World in 30 Days, a step-by-step -step guide to take back your country. Dr. Alan Keyes wrote the foreword saying, this book needs to be placed in the hands of every millennial and Bible-believing pastor in America. In How to Liberate the World in 30 Days, Gordon Klingenschmidt equips you with 30 powerful political tools in a 30-day devotional. His 15 inspiring true stories of political victory prove the effectiveness of these methods. You don't even need to get elected to take back your government. By becoming the media, gathering petitions, building an army, and prayerfully fighting the right enemy, you can reverse bad laws and help establish the kingdom of God right now. But if you read this book, you just might get elected too. Order your copy today. It's available in the Superstore at WND.com on Amazon. And you can get the first chapter free right now if you visit the website schooloflibertyorg Again, that's schooloflibertyorg That's schooloflibertyorg It's time to take back your country. He is the intersection of church and state. Here is Dr. Chaps. Welcome back. I am Dr. Chaps. I'm joined again in the studio by Greg Lopez, who is running for governor of the state of Colorado. Greg, welcome back to the program. Tell me about your legislative priorities. I know as an executive, if you are the governor, you're gonna have to appoint judges who will rule in the Colorado courts. You're gonna to have to negotiate with legislators like I was a state representative in right. the State House of Colorado, but they are gonna pass all kinds of laws and send them to your desk. What do you wanna sign first? 
You know, I first want to sign something that helps small businesses be successful. You know what? I want to ask the legislature to make sure that they evaluate what is the business environment for small business. Because small business is the heart and soul of our country. It's also the heart and soul of our state. You know, small business creates jobs. Small business is the the real engine to our economic well-being for the state. So I'd like to see the legislature bring forth bills that remove regulations off the backs and shoulders of small business and make sure that we are helping them to be successful. Those are the types of things that I would like to see initially. You know, the other thing I want to do is, you know, there's so many times that time and time again, the issue seems to be transportation and education. Well, we have a big issue in Colorado Springs because I-25 is only two lanes each way. And every day at rush hour, it seems like it clogs up and there's a backlog. Would you commit to expanding I-25? I would. You know what? The reason we're having those issues on I-25 is because it's a poor leadership and poor vision. And being a former mayor, understanding what you need to look at in its totality to make sure that you create a true community that's able to retain its quality of life. Because that's what people go to communities, is there's something unique about them, there's something that they like. You know, one of the things that I want to do as governor is every legislative session, I want to give the legislature a topic that I want them to focus in on. Instead of going all over the gamut, like you just said, they're going to bring all types of bills forward. The first issue that I want to bring to them is transportation. You know, say, look, in this legislative session, I need you to focus on the issue of transportation. We need to have resolution on this. We can't continuously every year figure out that we can't seem to get together to make sure that we're building the roads that we need for commerce and economic vitality. You know, the second session, what I like to do is have them focus on education. You know, there are major issues, but, you know, as I watch the legislature, it doesn't seem that the governor is giving them a topic that he wants them to focus in on. Right? Well, you you were very kind in not mentioning John Hickenlooper's name, but I will mention his <laughs> name. Uh, as the Democrat governor of Colorado, he opposed, honestly, he broke his campaign promise to widen I-25 to focus on transportation. Instead, uh, he passed these bills to raise everybody's taxes and then diverted the money away from transportation. And when we signed letters to him, Asking him to widen I-25, he said, no, no, only if you raise the hospital bed tax, then I will trade. And we said, no, no trade. We're not gonna raise taxes on people, sick people in hospitals just so that you can keep your promise. You should widen I-25 and keep your promise. You know, and what that tells you is that he never truly understood what it means to be a true public servant. You know, as, a, as an elected official, your job is to represent the best interests and wishes of everybody in the state, specifically for those that you know are asking for help. Basically, he turned his back on people and said, look, I'm not going to help you unless you give me what I want. And that's not what a true public servant's all about. You know, one of the reasons I'm running is because I have a calling, I feel. Throughout my entire career, I've always been one that wants to help people. You know, be a public servant. Take the knowledge that I have, take the experience that I have, and give back to a community. And that's what I will be as a governor is make sure that people understand I'm here to solve problems, not to create problems. I'm more here to make sure that we're moving forward. You know, is it going to be difficult at times? Sure it is. You know, typically you have funding that is holding you back or engineering. But the one thing that you cannot do is tell people you're going to do something and then change your mind without an explanation. The front runner in the Democrat party appears to be Jared Polis. He might be your opponent That's for, for governor. Uh, and as a US congressman, he has been pouring out his own private money to bankrupt and to ban the oil industry or the energy development industry or to ban fracking or to um, you know impose restrictions uh, legalistic restrictions on people who are working hard to produce clean and cheap energy for the people of Colorado. Do you think that would ultimately, if he were elected governor, would that raise everybody's electric bill? I think it would, you know, there's no doubt about it. But let me tell you why he's taking that position. You said it in the very beginning. He's very wealthy, you know. He's never really had to work in these communities and really work hard from a standpoint of providing for a family or providing for his children, anytime, any of those types of issues. So when he's looking at 
we're going to restrict fracking. We're going to look at this. He never takes in consideration the human element of what he's destroying. Families, you know, being able to reach the American dream. And that's something that, you know, I come from humble beginnings. My mom and dad were migrant workers. They worked in the fields until I was five. Talk about your Hispanic heritage. You know, and so, you know, they were migrant workers. And my dad really never learned how to read and write. He had a sixth grade education. Wow. My mom has an eighth grade education. You know, and so I understand where I come from, you know, and we're like everybody else. It's about our family. It's about our children. You know what? And the American dream is basically based on opportunity. We have to work hard, you know, to make sure that we can achieve what we want to achieve. And that's something that makes America great and Colorado great is that we do have the ability to mo to achieve mobility within the financial segments of our communities. And so, you know, that's the thing that when right now Colorado has 21 percent of its population is Hispanic. Yeah. I will be able to connect with a lot of those minorities as a governor and let them know that, you know what, really at the end of the day, their values are really in line with Republican values. They're not necessarily aligned with Democratic values, right. but I don't think they've ever really had someone that can actually connect with them because they share the same uh, ethnic background. So talk about immigration for a second. I know this is a federal issue, but Donald Trump, our president, has been in the news because he made that a mainstay of his campaign. Do you agree or disagree? How would you approach immigration? Well, I could tell you this. I'm a strong believer in the rule of law. Okay, we're all protected under the Constitution of the United States. Yes. We all have equal protection. No one has extra protection. You know, I am not an advocate for sanctuary cities. I do not support those. You know, we are a country that was built on immigrants, legal immigration. You know, I don't say that they don't belong here. I just want them to be here legally. And if we need to help remove the system or modify the system for them to be here legally, then let's do that. But you know what? As it pertains to the wall, we've always had a wall. It was an invisible wall. They have disrespected our rules and our wall to say, can you please come in our country the right way? They have chosen to say, we're going to get there no matter what we need to do. And so I would like to remind them that when you're in America, we follow rules. We follow rules because it benefits all of us. And so we, all we're asking you to do is respect our country, yeah. you know, respect our flag, do what you need to do to provide for your family and your children, but do it in the American way. And I think your message that you just said really resonates very well with Hispanic families. I think they, they agree with you and, and I certainly agree with you. We're gonna take another short break. When we come back, I'm gonna ask the questions you've all been waiting for about God, guns, and babies. This is PIJN News, defending your religious freedom. Dr. Chaps will be right back. Did you know religious freedom is under fire in our military today? Our troops do not have protection. For example, military chapels are now being desecrated by homosexual wedding ceremonies on bases in all 50 states. Our troops are now also faced punishment if they dare to object to sharing common sleeping quarters or common shower facilities, or if chaplains dare to quote the Bible during private counseling that declares that homosexuality is a sin. Nobody in our military should be forced to violate their Christian conscience, especially their right to pray publicly in Jesus' name. Let's take action today for religious freedom. Would you sign a petition with me? Visit PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org. Let's defend religious freedom for our troops. Take action today. Dr. Chaps needs you to sign today's petition right now. Again, visit PrayInJesusName.org to sign our petition right now. You know, people ask me, Chaps, we're watching on this network. We've already set our DVR to record your shows, but our friends, don't have this network, or maybe they can't watch at this time. Did you know we are on demand on 10 different platforms? You can tell your friends to find this show, PIJN News, on their Roku box or their Amazon Fire box. Just look under the religion or news categories. Or maybe you have a smartphone or your friends or grandchildren can find us on Android TV, Google TV, Smart TV, or iTunes. Of course, we're always on the internet, Look for us on YouTube or Facebook or Twitter, or better yet, subscribe to our daily email alerts at PrayInJesusName.org. 
it's important that you share all of these available platforms with your friends so we can mobilize all of the body of Christ to pray the news and change the world. Would you join us? Visit PrayInJesusName.org to learn more. Defending your religious freedom, here is Dr. Chaps. Welcome back, Dr. Chaps. We are not endorsing or opposing any candidates for public office. All candidates are welcome to contact us if they want equal time. So Greg Lopez, uh, tell me about your religious upbringing. This is a religious audience. Maybe uh, talk about your faith. You know, uh, I'm a strong believer in my Lord and Savior. You know, people ask me, you know, Greg, how are you gonna do this? And I tell them, you know what? I'm putting it all in the Lord's hands. You know, he's put it in my heart to do this. Um, and I, like I said, I've always been a public servant trying to help people. You know, I was raised Catholic. You know, my mom would always take us to church. I'm a Christian. You know, I read the Bible every day. I pray every day. You know, every day is a blessing for me. You know, I don't do anything and I don't take credit for anything that I'm able to achieve without giving our Lord the credit that he deserves. You know, and I'm very blessed and I'm humbled by the fact that, you know, I know he's in my life every single day and I just try to walk in his light. I just try to be what he wants me to be and work in his kingdom. And how many years have you been married? 30. 30 years and two beautiful children. Right. I think you're doing things the right way. Uh, talk about, I know you served in our armed forces, fellow Air Force member, and I was a Navy chaplain, but uh, talk about your defense of the Constitution, especially the Second Amendment. Well, let me tell you, you know, I'm a strong patriot. You know, when I joined the military, that's exactly what I wanted to do was serve our country. And I do support the Second Amendment. I truly believe in the Constitution. You know, I don't espouse to that, that the Constitution can be modified or changed because it needs to keep up with modern times. I'm a firm believer that if we follow the Constitution because it was created by divine intervention, you know, our country had the hand of God on it and I am not one to play with that. And so I'm a strong supporter of the Second Amendment. I believe everyone should have the right to protect themselves and everyone should have the right to own a gun. So as a person of faith like myself, you believe in constitutional rights. Do those constitutional rights extend to unborn children? Uh, are you pro-life and how would you vote or would you veto any bills that would fund abortion in Colorado? I would, you know, and I'm a strong advocate for uh, the right to life. You know, to me, every child is a gift of God. It's a blessing that we get. You know, I had a little brother, uh, he passed away earlier this year, but I call him little, he was a year younger than me. But you know what, he, when he was born, he couldn't see, he couldn't hear, he couldn't speak, you know? And really for me, it taught me that, you know what, it doesn't matter what your physical abilities are. You, there is a, a light inside of you that is a reflection of our Lord and Savior. You know, and so I do protect life from conception. You know, and I would not sign any bill that would allow for any type of funding to, to eliminate life from any perspective. So do you remember when Colorado passed or tried to pass the so-called personhood amendments to define life beginning at conception? Uh, how, how do you feel about that issue? You know, I'm a strong advocate for that. You know, I think people need to understand, you know, and it's a difficult conversation and I understand that, but really, you know, it's kind of like saying, you know what, if you plant a seed, it doesn't matter what plant it is, it's going to be that, you know? People will try to convince you that, no, that's not a human being, that's not a child, that's something else. Well, for me, no. You know, that is a seed that God has given us, and it's going to be created under His image. It was created under His image, and it's our job to protect it. When I was a legislator, there was a strong lobby well-funded by the left, and it is the LGBT lobby. And they, they go to the Capitol and they demand co-ed bathrooms for men to go into women's bathrooms or for uh, men to access children's bathrooms in public schools. The Obama administration tried to force that. Thankfully, Trump is reversing that. Do you have any feelings about the movement in general or would you protect the innocence and the freedom of, of people of faith? Let me tell you what's going on from my perspective, from my optics. What we're seeing is a world without God. What we're seeing is a society without a moral a compass. 
to make sure that we understand that there are certain things that we need to stand strong against, and that is anything that goes against our teachings from the Word of God. You know, and I understand that community. They've approached me on a number of issues. You know, I love them as individuals. I don't agree with their processes. I don't agree with where they're they're going. You know, we need to remind our children that if they were born as a as a boy, they're a boy. They were born as a female, they're a female. We don't need to confuse them any more than what life is already trying to confuse them about. If you are the Republican nominee, I can't wait to see you debate Jared Polis, the open homosexual congressman who's running for governor uh, and the presumptive nominee of the Democrat party, although there are some other candidates on that side. Right. And they're all welcome to come on our program. Come on on, Jared Polis, let's, let's debate you here in the studio. Uh, Greg, I'm so honored to meet you. I'm gonna give you a, about a minute to here to tell people your website, tell people where they can meet you. You're, you have some events coming up, anything you wanna say. You know, again, my name is Greg Lopez and I'm running for governor of Colorado. Let me tell you why. I believe the job of the governor is to promote, preserve and protect the various economies and the different ways of life that make Colorado the great state that it is. It's about all of us. You know, and that's one thing that I want to make sure everybody understands that we need to unite. We need to come together as a people so that we can help everyone, the poor, the ones that are struggling to have an opportunity to reach the American dream. And it's through the conservative values that we're going to be able to change the trajectory of where Colorado is going today. And so feel free to come to my website, www.lopezforgovernor.com. See about where I stand learn more about my experience and my background, but most importantly, remember, this race is about every single Coloradan. There are 64 counties in the state, and the governor's job is to make sure that he keeps his hands on the pulse of the community for the betterment of all. I can tell that you really care about your country, you care about the community, and I'm so glad to meet you. Greg Lopez, thank, thank you, you so for coming much. on our program. You bet. All right. Our website is PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org. If you would please donate when you visit, it will help us expand this audience. If you need prayer today, call us at 866-Obey-God. We'll see you next time. Today, I wanna to invite you to sign an important petition to Congress to protect military chaplains especially their right to pray publicly in Jesus' name. If you remember my story, you know that I was vindicated by Congress in 2006 after I took a principled stand for the right to pray in Jesus' name. But Congress never did pass a positive law to let chaplains pray according to their conscience. Would you sign that petition with me? Let's take action today. Dr. Chaps needs your financial support to stay on the air. Would you please send your best donation today? Please visit PrayInJesusName.org to donate online. Or you can mail a check to Pray In Jesus Name Ministries, Post Office Box 77077, Colorado Springs, Colorado 80970. You can also call us toll free right now at 866-Obey-God. That's 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D. Please sign up for our free emails at PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org.